Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3b of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 76 and the question is number 2. So it reads, a particle is, is projected with initial speed u down a hill. The line of projection makes an angle alpha with the hill and the hill itself is inclined at an angle beta to the horizontal. And we're asked to find the velocities and the distances. We have a sketch of the motion on page 77 and I've drawn that in front of you. So you have your incline at an angle bz to the xy plane and this vector here is the u vector the initial velocity vector and I told you the best way to solve these is to create a new uh, a new plane which is begins whereby the x we'll say the x prime plane is, is at the is parallel to the incline itself so I've drawn that in black and you just draw a perpendicular line for the y prime so all I've done is I've got my x y plane and rotated it at an angle beta degrees. The initial velocity vector is an angle alpha to the to the actual x y plane. It's x prime y prime plane. So the next thing we need to do is resolve this vector into its component unit vectors. Now I'm just going to tell you that in this case I'm not defining my unit vectors like this. They would be parallel to the x y plane and that isn't what we want. So I'm going to find my unit vectors parallel to the x prime y prime plane like that alright so I'm just going to get rid of those because we don't need that anymore so of course when we're resolving this we want the two vectors to be parallel to the x prime y prime planes or axes excuse me like so this vector is u sub y this vector here is u sub x this is equal to u sine alpha u cos alpha. So just note that. We know both of them are positive because look this vector is in the positive x prime direction and this vector is in the positive y prime direction. So that's vector u and that was pretty straightforward. The more difficult part of course is going to be gravity. I'll talk about that now. So gravity acts in the negative y direction like so, the negative y direction. So how do we do this? Well we need to resolve it in the x prime y prime plane in order to have, for this to be any good and this you need to be you need to be a bit switched on with this. So the best way to do it is as follows. Uh, you always will have the longer part being a parallel to the y prime plane so look draw a nice parallel line but quite long like that and then go parallel to the x prime plane and look at the directions, you need those in order for them to add to get the red, ang red line there, which is G. That's at a right angle. So this one here is U sub Y, and this one down here is U sub X. Or, excuse me, not U, it's G. Like that. Alright, now, in question 2 I showed you something. I said if you have two angles, well, I'll say this is the angle of beta, and we have another angle called alpha. And where alpha and beta intersect in at least one right angle like this, then alpha equals beta. Now if we look, that's the case that we have here. If we look closely, we see that if we extend, if we extend g sub y down, we're going to get a right angle with the with the beta with beta, we'll say. So that means this angle here is also beta. Alright? What that means is that g sub x is equal to g times the sine of beta because that's the opposite angle and g sub y is equal to g cos beta. Does that make any sense? Opposite is this direction here so that gives sine and adjacent is that one there. Now there's something very important here. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to get rid of this don't need that. I'm going to work down here. It's probably easier. So if I have a plane, our plane currently is extending like this. And what we've done is we resolved the vector like this. So this was, excuse me, that isn't that way. It's this way. This is g sub y. This is g sub x. All right. And this here we'll say is the actual horizontal. So look, if I project my my particle like this. 
the g sub y vector is going to slow it down because it's in the negative y direction but the g sub x vector is in the positive direction so look here's I'll just draw the plane this is x prime this is y prime so look g sub x is in the positive x prime direction so it's going to actually accelerate it and g sub y is in the negative y prime direction so it's going to slow it down now this is very important because that means uh, the following I said in the past that the book calls gravity it says minus g is equal to 9.81 and I said I will write g equal to 9.81 and I said provided you do that way you're always going to be grand and that is true however we're also adding in a new thing here where gravity can be both positive and negative because up until now gravity was always going to be negative but as we're seeing here gravity is actually accelerating the x direction so we're still going to say g sub y is equal to uh, g times we'll say what was it again it was cosine beta and of course when you put in nine point, minus 9.81 this will be negative which is a deceleration however if I do the same here I get g sine beta that means when I put in minus 9.8 this becomes a deceleration as well so the only way to stop that is by putting in a negative sign so for, for that means that means in this particular incline the g sub x is equal to minus g sine beta and g sub y is equal to g cos beta All right. So I hope that's reasonably straightforward. If it's not, please tell me, and uh, I'll do that again. Do tell me in the comments. Now, just to contrast, if of course a hill was inclined a different direction, all right, it's inclined like this, and here, and it's going to draw. This is y prime, and this is x prime. Now, if we have, if we have our gravity vector acting this way, we have to resolve it. So I'm going to resolve it like this. Let me think now. So this is g sub y, g sub x. Now look at this. If it's angled this way, g sub y is once again in the negative y prime direction, but and g sub x is in the negative y prime direction. So both of them are decelerating it. So g sub y will be equal to uh, g times cos beta and g sub x will be also equal to positive g but it will be sine of beta alright so if it's inclined the opposite direction it will be a negative sign here to account for the fact that gravity is actually accelerating the particle alright so next thing we need to do is put in expressions for our v and s so V is equal to U plus AT. So that's U times this, uh, that's not sine, that's cosine in fact. U cos alpha plus AT. So that's minus G sine beta T. S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. So that becomes U cos alpha T minus a half g sine beta t squared similarly v sub y that's what was that sine of alpha v sub y becomes u sine of alpha plus g cos beta times t and s sub y becomes u sine of alpha plus a half g times cos beta t squared alright and if you check this in the back of the book that is correct however of course this sign these two signs will be swapped so this will be this side will be negative and this side will be positive and as like I said the only diff the reason for that is is the book says it's minus g is equal to 9.8 and I say g is equal to minus 9.8 alright so that's that thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel